morning. This is the Tuesday, May 31st meeting of the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners. My name is Deb Shore, serving as chair this year. To my left is our vice chairwoman, Christy Yoakum, and Commissioner Vest. And to my right, Commissioner Sean Flowerday. If you'd please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, if you'd begin the agenda, please. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available for electronic viewing from the county clerk's staff. Printing options are available, uh, available upon request. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Agenda item one are minutes. Approve the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held on May 24, 2022. Move approval. Second. A motion is second to approve minutes for May 24th. Call the roll, please. Vest? Yes. Yoakum? Yes. Flower Day? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. Next is approval of the minutes of the Lincoln Chambers May Public Forum held on May 25th, 2022. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. Call the roll, please. Flower Day? Yes. Vest? Yes. Yoakum? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. Number two are claims, approval of all claims process through May 31st, 2022. Move approval of the claims through May 31st. Second. A second to approve the claims. Call the roll, please. Yoakum? Yes. Flower Day? Yep. Vest? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Next is number three, a special presentation, recognition of Lynn Johnson, director of Lincoln Parks and Recreation for 25 years of service. All right. Mr. Johnson, I believe we have a, um, some words to read into the record on your behalf. Would you like uh, me to do that? Yes, please. Lynn Johnson joined the Lincoln Parks and Recreation in January 1997 to serve as his planning and construction manager and was selected as director in 2000. Johnson's first project as planning and construction manager was the site selection and design of the F Street Community Center. His first project as director was the renovation of the Sunken Gardens. Johnson also was part of the Antelope Valley project team that led the development of Union Plaza, extension of the trail along Antelope Creek, Antelope Creek north to Salt Creek, and improvements in Trago Park, including the combined spray ground and splash pad. As director, Johnson led other significant projects with assistance from the Lincoln Parks Foundation, including expansion of the Pioneer Park Nature Center, renovation of the Nebraska Centennial Mall, development of Lincoln Community Foundation Towers Square at 13th and P Streets, and design of the planned Air Park Recreation Center. Johnson's last day with the Lincoln Parks and Recreation is June 1st, 2022. And we wanted to take a moment to, to thank you. Um, obviously, a, an amazing list. Uh, you can't really go anywhere in Lincoln and not see a project that you touched. Um, I was just reminiscing with Lynn. I first met um, him when I was appointed to the Parks and Rec Board by Mayor Mike Johan. So it's going back um, a long way. So we wanted just to take a moment to, to thank you for, for the partnership that Lincoln and Lancaster County have had with regards to the Parks and Rec Department for so many years and um, your work with, on Wilderness Park, which of course is the county park, so. As the board's current representative to the uh, Park and Rec Committee, it's just uh, awe-inspiring to see how much ground is covered by the Lincoln Parks and Rec. And, Lincoln has a great history of managing public facilities so that all the citizens have opportunity to green spaces and pools and library and all kinds of great activities. And managing them all is a tremendous task and Lynn's done it with great grace and insight and, and not only continued all that we had but developed and grown 
grown more and maintained them in great shape. Lynn, and besides that, you're just a wonderful person to deal with, and I, I, I've just, it's been an honor for me to serve with you these last four years. Our parks are certainly a point of pride for everyone in the community and certainly adds to the quality of life of all of us, all of us here in Lincoln. And um, I, I typically think of the park synonymous with your name, and so now I'm going to have to train myself to think a little differently. But thank you for your years of service and all the progress that you've made here in Lincoln. It's really hard to measure just how much you've contributed to our community through the work of keeping, keeping things livable, keeping things pleasant keeping things you know green and welcoming um and it's just it you've done yeoman's work and thank you very much for your service to our community this is very high praise thank you i truly have enjoyed the work that i've done and you all know we work with a tremendous community who is incredibly supportive of the work one of the things I think that was very wise is that there are obviously designated seats for county board members on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. And I think that, that welds that relationship that we have between the, the city and the county. And thank you for your recognition this morning. It means a tremendous amount to me. Uh, to, amount to me. Thanks very much. Um, we know Maggie will do a great job. Um, Maggie Stuckey, Ross, stepping in um, in Lynn's chair. and. Um, we know that you'll stay involved in the community and um, enjoy those grandchildren and your retirement. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Next are consent items. These are routine business items that are expected to be adopted without dissent. Any individual item may be removed for special discussion and consideration by a commissioner or by any member of the public without prior notice. Unless there is an exception, these items will be approved as one with a single vote of the Board of Commissioners. These items are approval of amendments to the following county contracts, C-21-235, with the Board of Regents of the University of Nebraska on behalf of the University of Nebraska Lincoln's Center on Children, Families, and the Law, and Nebraska Children and Families Foundation for the Rent and Utility Assistance Disbursement Program. C-21-344 with NMC ink for electrical generator maintenance and repairs right away contracts with the following Rademacher family trust south 134th street and firth road in amount of 703 dollars ndr farms llc north 70th street and west davy road in amount of 559 dollars utility permit 2253 align windstream nebraska to replace communication line due to removal and replacement of county culvert T291. Setting a public hearing for Tuesday, June 27th, or excuse me, June 7th, 2022, at 9 a.m. In, in room 112 of the County City Building regarding an amusement license application from Sue Coles, Prairie Pine Partners, to hold the Metal Arc Music Festival on July, July 9th, 2022, at 3100 North 112th Street, Lincoln, Nebraska. Is there a motion to approve the consent items? So I'm moved. Second. Motion is second. Call the roll, please. Yoakum? Yes. Flower Day? Yes. Best? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number five is to be held. Next is new business. Uh, 6A is to be held. 6B is a resolution in matter of a corporate manager liquor license for Shannon Martin Roebuck in the connection of a Class Y liquor license for Caprillo Winery. LLC doing business at Wind, as Windcrest Winery. John Ward with the Lancaster County Attorney's Office. Last week we had the Class Y Farm Winery application and there was not a corporate manager piece of it. John Berry from Engineering came up and discussed a driveway condition that needs to be addressed. This resolution addresses the corporate manager piece with the same driveway restriction. Okay. Move approval. Second. We did tell the applicant that she did not need to be present. So yep. Yes. Call the roll, please. Flower Day? Yes. Best? Yes. Yoakum? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries 4 to 0. C is a special events per permit application from Gravel Worlds Gravel Adventures LLC for a bicycle ride and ultra run event to be held on August 19th and 20th, 2022. Is there anyone here 
wishing to speak on this? Your shirt said gravel, so I assume that's why you're here. I'm just Probably a wild a guess. <laughs> Probably not a lot of people talking about gravel other than me. So uh, is it okay if I talk about the event a little bit? That's so we're, we're back for our 13th year. You, we've been here many times to talk to you. So thank you again for um, all the support we get from the county and the city. Um, we're bigger than ever than last year. Um, we're 2,500 participants that are coming from all over the world. So we have 48 states, 14 countries coming from 14 different continents. So uh, a lot of people were super excited about that. We added the 50K Ultra this year. So we have an ultra marathon running out on gravel. So 31 miles of running on gravel. So super excited about that. We also have, we're gonna have live music. So we have a full stage out there. So we're gonna have live music Thursday night um, and then all day Saturday out there. So super excited. It's all up in on the north side of town in Fallbrook um, and then all the gravel roads in Lincoln. So uh, our main event is a 150 mile event, but we also have a 300 mile event that starts Friday night. They ride all night, go through Saturday. Uh, and then we also have shorter distances for normal, more normal people. So we have a 75 mile and then a 50K bike ride, which is about 31 mile bike ride. Um, the best part of all this is uh, this year we're expected to raise over $25,000 for nonprofits. Um, the biggest part of that is, or form of that is coming from our Thousand Women of Gravel Worlds campaign. Um, we A big uh, push for us this year is to get more women into cycling and more women into gravel. And uh, that Thousand Women campaign would be something that other, even other major races have never accomplished. And especially the percentage of women at the event um, would be almost double what the industry average is. So we're really close to that goal of 1,000 women. We're at about 860 women, so 140 to go. Um, which has already doubled the number of women we've ever had. So really excited about that. Uh, but through that campaign, we're raising $15 per woman, which would be $15,000. That's going to go to Nebraska NICA, which is, um, since there's not cycling uh, in like high school organize, organized cycling, it's a national organization that basically makes a middle school and high, so high school cycling organization. So um, that would be the largest donation that Nebraska NICA has ever received, so really excited about that. And then another 10,000 would be raised for um, other nonprofits. A big part of that is uh, the Randy Gibson Memorial Fund, which is through the Parks and Rec Foundation, so here in Lincoln. So very, very excited um, for another big year, bringing people from all over the world, and it's gonna be a good year. Wow, those, those numbers are super impressive. Yeah, we're really excited. We're top five um, gravel bike races in the world now. So, how many volunteers do you work with? To uh, in a off? normal year, uh, our the most we've ever had is 150. We'll probably have closer to 200 or 250 this year. Um, we do make a donation on their behalf as well. Um, so, based on, we usually do 10 to 15 dollars per volunteer. So that'll be another three to four thousand dollars that will three to five thousand dollars we'll raise to the Randy Gibson Fund. And you did say they ride overnight in the uh, We do have one event that they are riding overnight. So that, that event is pretty special. We added that last year almost as a joke. We thought like five people would do it, and over 100 people came to do that one. We have, over, uh, we have 150 <coughs> people this year. Uh, so they start 5 p.m. on Friday, and then they have until midnight Saturday night uh, to ride 300 miles. So they ride all night ride all day the next day and finish at some point the following day. So yeah. And then we have uh, we have over 100 people that are also doing what we're calling the double, which is the 50K Ultra on Friday, and then they're biking 150 miles the next day on Saturday. So we can't make things crazy enough for people. <laughs> they keep signing up. So. Well, it sounds like a wonderful event, and um, I'm sure our Convention and Visitors Bureau is thrilled to have this many people coming and staying in our hotels yes, and eating uh, in our restaurants and doing all that. Absolutely. We're, we're expecting the local impact will be about $3.5 million to $4 million to the local impact. So That was my first thought was Jeff Mull's got to be smiling again about <laughs> the gravel works, and then... Ladies, the challenge is before you all. See, Let's there's get what, to that one, two, there's, mark. There's, there's, there. yeah, so there's eight close. of us here in the room. We'll okay. right. Get another up. eight. That's <laughs> We got it. That's another percent right there to get closer. So, 
I was thinking a little less about peddling and more about what opportunities for volunteers or what kind of community volunteers do you need? Um, yeah, we would, as many volunteers as we can get, we'd love having volunteers, whether that's, you know, helping with parking in the morning uh, to handing out finisher patches at the finish line. Um, another big one is uh, at our, we have one single location that's our checkpoint that every event goes through. It's kind of unique for a cycling event. Uh, so whether you're doing the long 150 mile event or you're doing uh, the short 50k event, we have a single checkpoint out at Branched Oak Farms. Uh, it's right, it's about a mile away from Branched Oak Lake. Uh, so still inside the county. And um, yeah, we have, it's like a big old party out there. And so helping people fill up water bottles or give them goo energy gels and stuff. We, as whatever volunteers you want to do. Uh, we, we probably have an option for you sometime from Thursday to Sunday. Right. So. That, um, if people want to reach out, is gravel, gravel-worlds.com, yep. is that right? Gravel-worlds.com. We have links to our volunteering there. Or if you want to sign up, you can still sign up through August 1st is when registration closes. So. Well, we could practice up and sign up. Right, yeah, we can get, oh, yeah. You we can, could ride that. Anybody can ride that, that 50K, the 31 miles. Anybody can do that. So. Okay. <laughs> Just get to gravel. train them. In, in, on gravel, yeah. <laughs> I, I, Bunch of crazy people. I move approval. <laughs> second. All right. We appreciate your enthusiasm. Motion and a second to approve. Strickler. Thank you so much. Dan. Yoakum. Yes. Flaherty. Yes. Best. Yes. Sure. Yes. Motion carries four to zero. I know. We'll our fingers crossed for good weather for you too. Hey, stop paving roads too. <laughs> <laughs> the only person okay. that comes to us perfect. Is that. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> we know it. Love that. Love that. Um, okay. D. D's appointments to the Lancaster County Mental Health Crisis Center Advisory Committee for the term of June first, two thousand twenty-two through May thirty-first, two thousand twenty-five. This includes Tim Dolberg, Kevin Carmazon and Timothy Lopez. I move approval of these candidates. Second. Yeah, and we uh, appreciate their volunteer service Absolutely. in helping us uh, run a, a top-rate uh, crisis center. Call the roll, please. Yoakum? Yes. Florida? Yes. Vest? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. 6E is an amendment to the October 11th, 1990 lease agreement between Lancaster County, the City of Lincoln, and the D District Energy Corporation to change certain terms and expand the lease premises. Um, gentlemen, do you have any comments you'd like to make? We'll start out with Attorney Yeah, office. I'll just give you a brief. Uh, this is Candace Behrens from uh, Lancaster County Attorney's Office. And um, so I'll just give a brief description and then um, Mr. Uh, Levy is available for any questions that you might have. Um, so in 1990, uh, the county uh, entered into a lease agreement um, for, uh, to lease property um, uh, adjacent to, this, uh, to the city county building um, to provide uh, energy to that building. And um, that was a 20 year lease and that lease has been sort of continuing year to year. Um, now um, we're entering into another 20 year lease and um, in addition to the land that was part of or the leased property in the 1990 agreement, um, we're um, leasing some additional uh, ground um, to add some more equipment and chillers um, for the city county building. So it's doing that uh, largely the terms um, are the, the same um, with this lease as the 1990 lease and so I don't uh, anticipate many changes or anything that this lease agreement would cause to the old, to the first one so didn't explain that very well but <laughs> Madam Chair Commissioners good morning David Levy Baird Home Law Firm 625 South 14th Street on behalf of District Energy Corporation, I want to thank Candace and the County Attorney's Office for working with us on this. Their responsiveness was fantastic. I think I sent this maybe early last week, and, and here we are. So really appreciate that, and uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. This might be a, a question for Dan, because I know we talked about it at DEC, but the purpose of adding the new chiller is? 
It's to add, let me give it a try, and if, okay. if I mess it up, Dan will correct me. Um, it, believe it or not, it's to add storage for ice. That's part of how the chillers work is big amounts of ice, and you have to have more space to store ice. It's, you know, it is what it is. It takes up a lot of room, and uh, you need more of it to, to chill more efficiently, and so this adds space. So the equipment that would be added primarily is ice storage equipment. Questions? Got it. Okay. Dan says thumbs up. Okay. All right. There's no reason that Deb or I need to recuse ourselves from this. Cool. No. Yep. Because I was saying we have quorum issues. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I move approval. Second. A motion is second to approve uh, the lease agreement. Call the roll, please. Best. Yes. Yoakum? Yes. Flowerday? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Yeah, miss, thank you. Yep. F is a grant contract with Legal Aid of Nebraska for the Tenant Assistance Project to assist with the Emergency Rental Assistance Program for households that are unable to pay rent and utilities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The cost to county is $150,590. I move approval. Second. Okay, motion is second to approve the grant contract. Call the roll, please. Flower Day? Yes. Vest? Yes. Yoakum? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. G is a recommendation from the purchasing agent and county engineer to award and execute a purchase order to Kimco USA Inc. for a 10 ton salt hopper in the amount of $25,280.14. I Good morning. Ed Lawman, Lancaster County Engineer, Engineering Office, uh, Facilities Manager. <coughs> Purchase this, the reason for this the salt hopper, the current one we have is about 15 years old. We use this salt hopper when we get the salt deliveries in to ro roll it up and get it into our uh, salt domes. Uh, we did get estimates out there to go ahead and see what we could do to repair it, and they were much higher. So through a lot of research, we found a contract through, a, uh, through our agencies to be able to purchase it for about $10,000 less than it would have been on the open market. Um, we expect this uh, this particular salt hopper to last us another 10 or 15 years due to the corrosive of the salts and everything else that we use. So you put this on top of the salt dome and it funnels it? Actually, we, do, we put this on top of the conveyor so that then we, when, when the material is delivered, we mix it, put it into this, and then it conveyors it up into the salt domes. So that's how we store all of our salt for the year. Okay. It's a Big mixing bowl, basically. Yeah. I, yeah. There we go. Wait it. And the other one just became unsafe, and, and like, like I said, because of the corrosiveness and and, the, and everything else, and then you know the, the materials that they're needed to make these um, stainless steel and everything, um, so that they do last the 10 to 15 years. You know, with the rising cost of everything else, we felt it was necessary to do enough research to try and get the best money for what we could. Well, we appreciate that. Well, Is thinking about salt when the temperature is 90 degrees out, that's pretty proactive. I'm, I will move approval. Second. Okay, call the roll, please. Yoakum? Yes. Flower Day? Yes. Best? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Thank you. H has a recommend, a recommendations from the Joint Budget Committee for the 2022-2023 funding. Move approval. Second. It took us, what, two and a half hours to do this? Um, a lot of work with our city counterparts, and uh, thanks to, to Jenny for all her work in preparing the applications, and of course to Sarah for guiding us through the process. Um, we had to say no to a lot of good programs, but um, $1.5 million in, in funding for these agencies over the next two years. It's big work. It really is. Your brain hurts when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there a motion? I move approval. Oh, we have had a motion. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Call the roll, please. Yoakum? Yes. Flower Day? Yes. Vest? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number seven is public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to county business, not on the agenda, may do so at this time. Is there anyone here wishing to make public comment? 
right, seeing none. Next are announcements. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a staff meeting on Thursday, June 2nd, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. In, in room 112, the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold its next regular meeting on Tuesday, June 7th, 2022 at 9 a.m. with the Board of Equalization and Department Budget hearings immediately following in room 112 of the County City Building. County Commissioners can reach at 402-441-7447 or commission at lancaster.ne.gov. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting is broadcast live on Link TV City. For the rebroadcast re schedule, visit lincoln.ne.gov. Meetings are also streamed live on Link TV, YouTube, Roku, and Apple TV. Move we adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. Call the roll, please. Bess? Yes. Yoakum? Yes. Flower Day? Yes. Shore? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.